Are we ready? Okay. Good evening, St. Vincent's. Good evening, St. Vincent's. There's a very uh, small uh, group of you are here with us in the church, and most of us are at home. We have already lit our Ambo candle for tonight, so if you have not lit candles at home, I invite you to light them now as we begin tonight's service. For those of you who did not get uh, my email today, I want to let you know that Father Ray was going to preside at tonight's service, and he cannot do that for us because today, uh, in one of the routine tests that he receives at St. Elizabeth's, he tested positive for COVID. He is completely asymptomatic and is doing well, although he asks for your prayers that nothing at all develops, but he is required to quarantine for 10 days. So I ask all of us here, there, and everywhere to keep Father Ray in your prayers that he stays well and healthy and that at the end of 10 days, He's right back here with us. So uh, tonight we are gathered to welcome Father Richard Lawrence's body back into this church. And this reception of his body is taking place on his 78th birthday. Um, I have said to a couple of people that Father Dick always had a flair for the dramatic and so I'm sure that he feels very good about the fact that on his 78th birthday, uh, he is welcomed back into this home where he has spent so much time among a people that he has loved so greatly and so deeply. And so tonight we are gathered as we are always when we are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We will begin tonight's reception of Dick's body with a sprinkling of it. He began his spiritual journey at his baptism. And tonight we are going to sprinkle his body with holy water to honor all these days, weeks, months, and years that he has spent among us uh, as he has walked this path, as he has shown us what it means to be someone who is baptized into Christ, baptized into the roles of Christ, the roles of prophet, priest, and servant king. Dick know, knew those roles so well, and he knew uh, the ways in which we also were welcomed at our baptisms into those roles and those responsibilities. And so we want to express also our hope that his journey, which is now gone uh, home to his and our Abba, is complete here with us as it rises in a new way in another place. And so, um, Andy, would you help me? And we will um, sprinkle Dick's body. Any of you who were ever here when Dick sprinkled anyone or anything know that that job was not complete unless you were thoroughly dampened. So I felt it my responsibility to make sure we did it right. Uh, now what we will do is we will light the Paschal candle. Uh, one of uh, Father Dick's nieces, Kathleen, is here with us tonight. And Kathleen, together with Al Reichelt, are going to light that candle. Kathleen, would you come and take this wand and... Uh, from the Ambo candle, you will light that.
For Father Dick, we want to celebrate one of the most ancient traditions from the early church, the Fosolarion, the joyful light. It accompanies the lighting of the evening candles. This is our prayer. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Let your eternal light shine bright for Father Dick forever. And together we say, Amen. It is lit. This light will stay burning in this church until Father Dick's body is taken out of it for its final interment. What we will now do is we will incense his body. Pray and read. A reading from the book of Job. Then Job arose and tore his cloak and cut off his hair. He fell to the ground and worshiped. (sighs) Sorry. You 
said, Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked I shall go back to her. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our response to Psalm 8 will be, I will sing of your majesty. O Lord, our Lord, how awesome is your name through all the earth. I will sing of your majesty above the heavens with the mouths of babes and infants. You have established a bulwark against your foes to silence your enemy and avenger. I will sing of your majesty. When I see your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars that you set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and a son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him little less than a god, crowned him with glory and honor. I will sing of your majesty. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, put all things at his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. I will sing of your majesty. O Lord, our God, how awesome is your name through all the earth. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. None of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother or sister? Or you, 
Why do you look down on your brother or sister? For we shall all stand before judgment sent by God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, we shall all give an account of ourselves to God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was speaking, a woman called out from the crowd and said to him, Blessed is the one that carried you and the breasts at which you nursed. And he replied, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our parish mission statement at St. Vincent's includes the phrase that we are called to love, serve, and challenge one another. And pretty much from the time I met Dick, which was before we had crafted that parish mission statement, that's what he did. Pretty much from the time I met him, I felt that he loved me because he loved us. He loved the world. He loved the world that God made and him in it. He served. He served this parish. He served our city. He served us individually, his family, his parish family. He served people that he never really met. There are many, many people who have suffered through homelessness in this city who do not know his name, but who have been served by Richard Lawrence. And he challenged because Father Dick knew, as well as anyone, and better than most, that love does not come without challenge. That those two things go together very well. He was one who heard 
the word of God and observed it. And the word meant so much to him. It is why we read from this altar Bible. It is why he asked us to lean into and to learn from and to discover more at all times who we were, who we were in Christ. We lit this Paschal candle tonight and we think about the light that Father Lawrence brought into the world. Throughout the world, throughout his time here, as he encountered each one of us and loved and served us and challenged us, he challenged us to also bring the light further, to spark flames of justice and peace to challenge the places and the people and the times when there is no justice and no peace, to demand that others look inside themselves and also find that light and bring it out. And so as we begin these days of remembrance and of honor it is only fitting that as we go forth, we remember that this Paschal candle that is now burning is calling us also to burn, to be light, to carry the light, to bring out the light in others, to hear the word of God and observe it, and to remember what we've been taught and what we have learned and what we have been challenged to learn about the world and about ourselves. I told Father Dick many times, thank you. I think we probably all have told him thank you for the many ways in which he invited us to be bright lights. And we can continue to do that. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, stopping us. Instead of intercessions or prayers of the faithful tonight, here in church, we will have a minute of silence where we will remember all the people throughout the world who need our prayers, all those who are suffering, all those who are anxious, all those who have no one to pray for them. It is our tradition on Sundays to also write prayers into the chat feature of the live stream, and we can absolutely do that as well. And so now we will just take a moment of silence for our prayers. We know that all of our prayers, spoken aloud, in company, written in the live chat, held in the silence of our hearts, are heard. But together, we will pray one prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us 
from evil. Amen. This concludes our service. We will have a blessing. We invite you to come back to the live stream uh, tomorrow evening at seven o'clock. Father Joe Muth will lead a wake or vigil service. And we hope that you will be able to join us for that as well. And so we ask the Lord to bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we say the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. And we say, amen. Good night, dear community. We are so happy that you are here with us tonight. <laughs>